warm welcome to you at this, the beginning of a brand new series of Rule the Ways 3 playthroughs. I had a little competition before to ask you who you'd like me to see play, and you said Germany, which was an interesting choice because they don't have much of a navy. I'm going to be taking this navy through from 1935, where we're starting, on to 1970. If this is anything like the game I played of France, this series will easily go through into next year and could be as much as 100 episodes or indeed more. So much immersion, so much playthrough, so many questions to answer, so many fascinating questions. It's a great game system and I'm so delighted that you've decided to come along on this journey with me. Me being me, before I start on this, I'd like to have a little look at the wider context in which I'm going to play this fleet. So let's get rid of the game for a moment and go and consider what is on offer. I want to begin with a little review of the fleet and of the wider navy. So, you know, what are the bits that we've got to play with? First of all, the fleet. So we have a battle cruiser under construction and two battleships under construction. Well, I mean, that's handy. That's three major capital ships with half of their cost already paid for me and half of the time spent building already done. Hooray. We then have four heavy cruisers, nine lights and a big set of destroyers. I've divided them in the German style between actual fleet destroyers and what the Germans would have called torpedo boats which we would obviously be still destroyers, but putting on to trade protection. They're basically 900 tonners or less. We also have 20 U-boats. So it's potentially, once these battleships are built, it's a reasonably small but well-rounded force if you ignore that it's 1939 and there's no aircraft carriers. In addition, they've gone big on mine laying capacity. Uh, but they've gone tiny on minesweeping, so that will definitely need to be addressed. And they've a mixed and balanced uh, anti-submarine warfare, um, obviously against some enemies, such as Britain. ASW is problematic because they'll probably be blockaded, but, you know, it's an important factor for any modern fleet to have. The wider navy has eight coastal batteries, mainly in Germany, a few in East Germany and one in Prussia. Only Prussia, I believe, uh, could be lost. Obviously, the coastal batteries are great for anti-invasion. They're great for coastal mine laying. In addition, we have a pretty good air force. So we've got about 200 planes, well balanced between all the major roles, with the exception of torpedo bombers. We appear to have not researched torpedo bombers. And of course, the notable exception that we have no airships. I mean, we're Germany. We absolutely should have some airships. I know they're archaic by this point, but they're actually quite useful. And it was almost as if the game forgot that they're uh, easily shot down. So they do provide, uh, in modest numbers, a really good long range search capability. Finally, our basing capacity is absolutely solid. We only have two sea zones to worry about, and we've got more bases than we uh, could ever need. So, some gaps, ASW, aircraft carriers, the battleships and battle crews are not complete, but otherwise, on the surface at least, not bad. However, fleets aren't measured by themselves. Fleets are measured by how well they compare to everybody else in the rest of the world. So here is the battleships, battle cruisers, and fleet carriers for each of the major nations. And you can see Germany's problem multiplied by the fact that none of these are actually in service yet. So Germany only matches up against China and Spain at the moment. Once these are in service, they could make a reasonable challenge against France, Italy, and the Soviet Union, each of whom have seven uh, major ships. But obviously, we are well out of the league of taking on Japan or the USA or Britain. How to get there? Well, we need these battleships. But unfortunately, these battleships are a mixed bag. And when I say mixed bag, the vet in here is terrible. It's got 10 14 inch guns with only 80 shells, a couple of submerged torpedo tubes. It's got no scout planes. I've noted the lack of radar. I mean, in fairness, no one has radar, but it's good to think about scouting in a 
something beyond what your eyeballs can tell you. It's got a so-so defense, 12 inch belt, three inch deck, one torpedo defense. Three is the standard at the moment. It's got 16 five inch secondaries, but these are in casemates that so obviously can't be dual purpose. So its air defense is anemic with zero heavies, three mediums and four lights. It's a 21 knot coal fired ship from 1916, not 1936. Yes, I know it's 1935, but by the time this is actually launched, it will be 1936. There's, you know, a good amount of tons remaining to play with that I could use to try and modify it, but, you know, no. This is the equivalent of a, you know, standard battleship from the First World War era. Its speed is very, very slow. I'm looking for 28 knots or more in a modern fighting fleet. Yes, everybody else has a mixture of 21, 24, and one or two fast battleships. But I don't want to invest in that obsolescence. Its protection's weak, its scouting is lacking, its air defense is lacking. It costs 3,000 uh, a month to build over 31 months. I could upgrade it, but I would only get a 25 or 24 knot ship, depending. Now, that is a choice, depending on what we do with the next ship. But as is, I want to scrap the Vetin, save the money, and build something better. The next ship is the Deutschland, which will also be a 1936 ship. And as you can see from the profile, it's a um, Nelson Rodney-like uh, design. Nine 15-inch guns, not 16 like the Nelson Rodney, with only 90 shells and a couple of submerged torpedo tubes. Again, no scouting. Its defense at 15 and a half inch belt and a five and a half inch deck is much better as is its three level torpedo defense. It has an old style mixed secondary armament with 14 six inch guns and 10 three inch dual purposes. So it has a, a modest uh, air defense, 18 heavy, 34 medium and 17 light. It's 24 knots, at least it's oil fired. It's 39,600 tons with only a tiny bit remaining. It feels like they undergunned and over defended, but you know, that's the choice. After all, Germans did like to uh, maximize on the defensive aspects of their ships and were willing to accept a smaller gun as a consequence. So I'd like to scrap this, but I'm going to put it to a vote. I would like to scrap it because, as I said, I want a coherent, modern, fast 28, 29, 30 knot force that can uh, run circles around the other fleets and be a major force multiplier, giving me the option to outmaneuver an enemy or retreat if I'm overwhelmed. With this, it's a battleship that is still better than an awful lot of the ships in other navies. And it would allow me to take the vet in and upgrade that to this kind of level. And so I would then have those two battleships ready. Um, well, the vet in, I would have to let it finish building and then immediately put it into dockyard hands to do a major upgrade of probably another year before it was ready. So that would put it out to like 1937, maybe early 1938, before that ship was ready. So, you know, I, I could make this ship go faster, so it has an upgrade path itself if I downgraded these guns to 14 inch. And, and again, that would mean I'd have to finish this ship and then put it back into dockyard hands. I'd also address the um, secondary armament issue. I don't know. It feels like a lot of work to me to get uh, ships that I want eventually in two, three years' time. So I am predisposed to scrap, but I will put it to the vote. Do you think it's better to have couple of 24 knot ships or get rid of the vet in and keep this and just have it as a workhorse. I would like my ships to be like the Graf Spey, 
which is a battle cruiser, 10 16 inch guns with 35 sh uh, with 85 shells. Could be better, but you know, it's, it's a reasonable armament. A couple of scouting planes, 11 and a half inch and four inch deck, three torpedo defense, a modern secondary battery leaving 36 heavy, 29 medium and 28 light, which is a really nice mixed uh, air defense setup. I know there's an argument to say scout planes shouldn't really belong on battleships because they have to slow down to pick up the scout planes once they've been launched. And actually, you should transfer your scout planes to something like a seaplane carrier, a fast one, or to a light cruiser that carries you know, half a dozen uh, scouting aircraft, a sort of Tone kind of ca uh, cruiser from the Japanese Navy. Um, happy to discuss that, but for the moment, this is a much, much better ship, not least because it's 31 knots. Actually, that feels slightly too much, but, you know, fair enough. 49,500 tons with a slight deficit in weight remaining. So this is definitely a keeper. It's fast, it's well-rounded, it's modern. It costs 6,200 a month for 33 months. Obviously half of that's being paid. In comparison, the Vettin was half this price and the Deutschland was 4,100, so two thirds of the price. I can fix the, conning t uh, the overweight issue by removing the conning tower. So that's pretty e uh, easy. If I was to build a Graf Spey 2, I would probably up this 4-inch deck to 5 inches just to increase the immunity zone, because as is, it's, you know, like all battle cruisers, it's a bit fragile in its defensive arrangements. And for some reason, it's being built in Japan. So memo to self, keep the Japanese happy. So those are the big boys. If I've had a little run-through, which I didn't save, for just a year, just to see how the monthly budget did. So it was at about 17, and then it had these slow increases and ended up at about 21,000. And that's the blue, and the orange is the monthly balance. So running immediately at a deficit. And if I get rid of uh, Vetin, that uh, wipes out that deficit. And then I started a second graph spay, and as you can see, it put me into negative again, in fact, so negative that by October I had to pause it. But by November, the increase was coming in and I could start building it. So I could afford two Graf Spays and a Deutschland. Of course, if I got rid of the Deutschland, that would save me 4,000 a month. And I could either build something else, hello fleet carrier, or I could build uh, or modernize some of the cruisers and do some of the remedial work around them. Could start a third Graf Spey, but I'd, I'd be having to pause it and start it and pause it quite a lot. So my plan provisionally is to finish the Graf Spey 1, scrap the Vettin and start the Graf Spey 2. Once the Graf Spey is out, start on the Graf Spey 3. My reason for prioritizing that rather than the carrier is if a war pops up it's going to be a north sea baltic sea kind of war and i have a reasonable air force and i can invest more in the air force invest more in the air bases and increase that and kind of get by without an aircraft carrier but start the aircraft carrier pretty soon which naturally will be called the graf zeppelin uh, this is obviously going to be the graf navy and then build a fourth Graf Spey. Obviously the number two, number three, and number four would be modified. Potentially they might flip over into a fast battleship design, depends on what inventions come, but something similar-ish in speed, in firepower, to try and make a homogeneous force. And then carry on building more uh, Graf Zeppelins uh, in order by 1941, 1942, to have this well-rounded battleship aircraft carrier balance of fleets that provides uh, a wonderful classic fast attack force. 
whilst other navies are still struggling with 21 and 24 knots battleships. Now, this seven-year forecast assumes that the 4.1 thousand growth I had in my test year carries through, so that's why it's a nice straight line. Of course, terms and conditions apply, stuff will happen, and it won't be a straight line. It might get more uh, increase in this. My tension didn't really rise very much in my first year, and so with increased tensions, and also often with Germany, you get the uh, the Nazi government piling money into the Navy. So it may well increase more than that, which of course will allow me to shift this stuff across and invest more heavily earlier. So that's, that's the draft plan. Um, I'll probably have a look at it by the end of the year to see how it's going and, and potentially revise it. Let's have a look at the cruisers. They're a bit of a disappointment, I'm going to say. The Gneisenau, 12 8 inch guns, 130 rounds, which is good, a couple of submerged torpedo tubes, a couple of scout planes, which is fine, 7 inch belt, which is, you know, it's quite heavy, uh, 2 inch deck, mm, 1 torpedo defense, well, you know, on heavy cruisers, that's often all that you can manage. Uh, an old fashioned split secondary tertiary. Uh, secondary armament, so only 16 heavy, 10 medium, and 10 light. 32 knots, yeah. 17,800 tons for 12 8 inch guns. That doesn't sound like a good return in, on investment. And it's 1,000 tons overweight. Very poor. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep it, but it lacks bang for the buck. It's very expensive. It costs 2,900 a month to build. That's only slightly less, you know, by 200 than a Vetin class battleship. It's massively overweight. The guns are too small. Yeah, not happy with this at all. And this great overweightness is both makes it very difficult to do anything with it. And um, yeah, obviously it doesn't help for um, its sinkability. Lutzau is a, a straightforward eight eight inch guns with 130 rounds no torpedoes couple of scouting planes a more modest four inch belt with two inch deck and one torpedo uh, at least it has an integrated secondary armament of four inch dual purpose guns giving it 15 heavy five medium and four light could be a bit better in the uh, the local defense but you know not not bad certainly compared to Gneisenau. 31 knots again, 12,000 tons, which is much more reasonable for a heavy cruiser, an eight inch gun one, for still eight, 850 odd tons overweight. Again, obviously I'm gonna keep it. It's pretty undistinguished. I still think it's undergunned and overweight and 2,400 a month. So very poor heavy cruisers, honestly. I may, after a bit of a pause and to allow some more inventions, particularly if my budget goes up, I may start a new class of heavy cruisers because frankly, I, I fear for, uh, for these two. The light cruisers starts with the very peculiar Stuttgart class of eight five inch guns. Yeah, it's got 60 torpedoes. And as with most light cruisers uh, for Germany, it has uh, mines. No scout planes, one inch belt, one inch deck, hmm, uh, pathetic air defense because these five inch guns aren't dual purpose. 31 knots, 4,000 tons. I mean, that's very small. And uh, yeah, still overweight significantly. Probably would upgrade these once five inch dual purpose main armament is available. I would certainly correct that. Other than that, I'm not sure what I can do with these. Munchen, 12 six inch guns. Well, it's a slightly older design, but you know, it's actually probably the best of the light cruisers. A couple of scout planes, two inch belt, one and a half inch deck, four inch secondaries, a bit light air defense, but you know, it is a 1927 design. 31 knots, 7,800, 
still enormously overweight. Uh, it's a keeper. It's the best, but it's only the best of a bad lot. And if we have a look at the Hamburg, 1925, nine six inch guns, 160 uh, shells, six torpedoes and 40 mines. Again, you know, for its era, it's, it's not bad. Uh, lacks any scout planes. Reasonable defensive arrangement, again, similar to um, the Munchen. 32 knots, just under 7,000 tons, nearly 850 tons overweight. I mean, honestly, legacy ships that the AI generates are so illegal at times. I suppose it will encourage me to uh, build something better. I'll keep it, obviously, it's okay, but um, yeah, I'm not going to this for anything and the Bremen car class stretching all the way back to 1916 eight six inch guns it's five but only five on the broadside eight torpedo tubes more mines no planes uh, no air defense worth of speaking light armor 29 knots 5500 tons for once only a hundred tons overweight uh, this, I think, is upgradable. I could upgrade the air defense and make it into a uh, an anti-aircraft light cruiser, similar to what the British did with some of their C-class cruisers from this era. Those are the major fleet units. So I'm going to have four battle cruisers or fast battleships and three fleet carriers, and then all of this rubbish... And I would love to have either a seaplane carrier, a fast one for scouting, so that I can take off some of these scout planes from the battleships and uh, from the heavy cruisers and so on. Or perhaps uh, a light cruiser with half a dozen scout planes on it. Probably need a couple of new uh, heavy cruisers and probably could do with some new light cruisers as well. It would be good to have a light carrier that just is for fighters that I can put with the battleships so that they've got cap immediately over the battle line whilst the aircraft carriers are off doing their thing separately. That way it doesn't really matter if it gets sunk in a fleet action for whatever reason. Um, another seaplane carrier or light cruiser with uh, seaplanes to just increase the scouting element and probably some more light cruisers. I haven't looked at the destroyers. There are plenty of them. I probably need a more modern uh, one. The, the, the most modern is only 1,500. I think I can go up to 2,000, if not 2,500. So probably some fleet destroyers need building at some point, but I'll look at them in another episode. What I would like you to do is go over to uh, the community page and look at the poll. I'll put a link underneath and decide the fate of the Deutschland. Are we going to, and indeed the Vettin, I guess, am I going to upgrade the Vettin to a Deutschland speed and keep the Deutschland and have two medium speed battleships? Am I going to scrap the Vettin and upgrade the Deutschland to 27 knots so that I've got two fast battleships, or am I going to get rid of them both and just build the battleships and battlecruisers that I want to build? That's the key question at the very start of the game. I look forward to your comments and I look forward to your votes. And in the next episode, we'll crack on and start pushing through the months. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself.